Uh, hey, Coach, how did uh, KU not having Puka Williams this week kind of change the way you scattered them? It's interesting because uh, it, it does matter because he was such a big part of their offense. They would use him in so many different roles. Um, I mean, they use him, split him out of receiver and, and jet him into the backfield and do some things like that. And certainly it's going to create some – and maybe there's going to be some people out there that we're not sure who they are, where they fit. You know, but I think one of the bigger issues for us is the uncertainty of what's going to happen at their quarterback position and, uh, you know, who, who's going to be taking the snaps behind center. There's a lot of unknowns which has spread us pretty thin in our preparation. And uh, I also wanted to ask about A.J. Parker. I know we've talked before about him switching positions here, but what, what, how did that, I guess, decision come about, and what was his reaction when you approached him about it or he approached you about it? He was very excited about it. It came about uh, more out of necessity than anything else. I mean, there was a couple of weeks there where the cupboard was bare with what we had. I mean, just uh, we had a lot of guys that were cross-training a number of positions. Um, he was a guy that, you know, nickel is a very important position for us, and he was a guy that um, probably had the, the learning capacity to pick that stuff up quickly. We threw him in there in practice, and he shined, and he loved it. And so we just continued to, to progress him in that role, and, and – you know, we played him in that role in Oklahoma, not quite sure how it would, would manifest itself in game day, and it was great. You know, he's been tremendous every week. It, so is he still pumped to be playing there? He's still pumped to be playing there. You know, I think what excites him, you know, he's such a, a smart, cerebral kid. I think what excites him is the fact that he's still learning the position. You know, he played corner for so many years, and you know, not very many scenarios that he hadn't seen out there. There's still some scenarios and things that he's uncovering in there and unpacking at the nickel position. I think that he enjoys that. All right, thanks, Joe. Appreciate it. Michael. Well, Joe, what gets your attention most about uh, Andrew Parchman, uh, number four for KU wide receiver? Yeah, just tremendous ball skills, great length, good route runner. He's a scary guy out there. Um, you know, I, they, they do try to establish the run, which gives him a lot of one-on-one. -on -one. Um, opportunities and you know he, he's able to con convert on a lot of those I mean he's, a, he's a, as good as there is in the league. What's been your major emphasis this week versus last week? You know our, our big emphasis this week and, and as it is on every week but it's just on us you know it's, it's just our um, our run into the ball our attention to detail our body position uh, our finish those are the things that, that interest us more so than uh, what opponents are doing. That's coach uh, following up on that. Uh, how is the team progressing in those kind of fundamental things that uh, maybe you were a little bit behind with earlier in the season? Yeah, good question. We, we had, uh, um, you know, huge last week, especially a huge young guy emphasis. Uh, and that's going to probably uh, show a little bit. I mean, you, I think you might see some guys that maybe you haven't seen yet this year. Uh, a guy like Amaris Brown comes to mind. A guy like Hunter Henry comes to mind, some guys that, uh, you know, just needed more snaps. And we were able to give that to them uh, over the past couple of weeks. And hopefully they can uh, show us what they can do on game day a little bit. And you mentioned the KU quarterbacks. There's three of them. They're all a little bit different. How, how do they vary? Well, I, I worry about uh, the athleticism of Daniels um, and just the fact that, you know, he's, he's uh, uh, got tremendous speed. He's got a hose for an arm. I mean, he's a guy that uh, – that certainly has some talent, but doesn't probably have the time uh, on task as the other two do. Um, you know, Kendrick is a really uh, sh sharp uh, decision maker. Um, obviously, he's played the most this year, and he's uh, probably the most comfortable with what they're doing. And then McKelvey, I mean, has to fit into the, the, the equation somewhere. I mean, we didn't see a lot of him, but he's obviously the guy that started the year, so they must think highly of him. And uh, so... You're right. They are all a little bit different. Our attack on all three would be a little bit different. And uh, we'll have to see how it all plays out on Saturday. Thanks, Coach. Last one here, Derek. Coach, we haven't talked much about the linebackers this year. How would you assess your, the four that you're playing right now? And where do they need to get better? And what might we see moving forward from them? Um, they've been tremendous. They've been solid. Coach Standard's done a great job with all four of them. I think um, I was just talking to somebody earlier. I, I don't I don't pay attention to who's in. I mean, there's some uh, – I guess there's some positions where that matters to me when I'm calling a play. It doesn't matter to me at linebacker. I think all four of those guys are um, 
have a number of snaps on a belt and, and they're all they're all rock solid they have a very great grasp of what we're doing um i think that there's no drop off when deuce green and cody fletcher's in the game as opposed to justin hughes and, and eli Sullivan. and we, we get to the point you know we rotate those guys freely and uh, we get to the point where just whoever's got the hot hand is kind of the guy that that stays in the game and um you know, as far as getting better, I mean, they all have their their strengths and weaknesses, but I think they complement each other well. We tend to roll those guys in pairs a little bit, and Justin Hughes and Eli Sullivan, they're, they're a good tandem together. You know, Justin is a great communicator, uh, uh, very detailed with his, you know, alignments and fits and, and everything that he's doing. Um, Eli's not a great communicator. He's, he's a work in progress that way. I shouldn't say he's not, but he's, he's not a loud guy. Um, and they complement each other that way. Eli runs all over the place um, and you'll see him on one sideline and two seconds later, you see him on the other sideline. And Justin is a guy that prefers to stay, you know, close to the center as much as he can. And so those two guys work uh, with each other really well. And, and Deuce Green and, and Cody Fletcher have worked together for um, shoot three years now. And, and those guys are comfortable with each other's strengths and weaknesses. So I think they feed off of each other in tandems very well. Lastly, you mentioned Amaris Brown could could see the field this weekend. I think he played in week one on special teams. Without giving anything away, what's he shown to kind of prove that he belongs out there right now? Well, he's as athletic of a guy as we have on the team. I mean, he's uh, uh, he runs, he strikes, he, you know, finishes on balls. Uh, you know, trust him very much so in the open field. You know, his, his biggest thing was just hadn't um, – just didn't have the depth of knowledge in, in our package. And uh, as we talked earlier, I think the reps have helped him a lot this week, just hearing the terms, getting to, you know, chomp down on a game plan instead of the entirety of our package uh, for two weeks has helped him a lot. 